In this video, we're going to take a look at parameters and why they are important to configure design inside of Autodesk Inventor. We'll begin by looking at how to examine the parameters we have, modifying their properties, and marking them as tracking values for something later on in our design. So with this file, Parameter Review, from our Working Files directory, I'm going to enter into the first sketch that was created here for this extrusion. I'll select a face on the extrusion, and then choose Edit Sketch. Here you can see a number of dimensional values which are important to my design, such as the 75 degree opening angle on this part. In order to make it a little bit more understandable, I might want to give that a little bit more of a description to what that 75 value is. We'll begin by looking at how to view our dimensional names. If you are to right click inside your interface, you'll get an option to do a dimensional display. I have the short menu turned on for my marking menu. So you're not seeing this here in my right click menu, but that's okay because we actually have it in multiple areas. On the bottom, on your status bar, you'll notice there is an icon down here for dimensional display. If I select that, I can choose from five different ways of displaying my dimensions. I can see an option for value, name, expression, tolerance, and precise value. The most common toggle here is from the default tolerance over to the expression dimensional display. Here I can see the dimension identifiers as well as the value of what they are. You can actually see there's one or two equations already created here, such as the D13 is actually equal to D6, a very easy functional equation. I can see the parameter that I want to adjust, D12, is currently very non-descriptive. In order to make that something more descriptive than simply a dimensional placeholder, what I'll do is just double click on it, and there you can see it opens the Edit Dimension dialog. And what I'll do here is change the value of D12 to something else. So I'll begin by typing in what I would like to call this for a descriptive purpose. Opening, Angle. I'll set that equal to my 75. By hitting Enter, it will change the D placeholder to something called Opening Angle. That way it's easier for me to track and discuss with other users of the company about why that particular angle is important and how I use it in my design. When I tell the next person who works on this to change the opening angle to 95 degrees or 120 degrees, it's much easier for them to locate that particular parameter and modify it. So I'll continue to do this with a few more parameters. I can do this all here in this environment, or I can go right to the parameter screen to make adjustments right there. The disadvantage with that is I do have to know which each parameter is and what it does. I'm gonna activate our parameters dialog from our quick access toolbar at the top of the screen, it's this little FX button. That brings up a dialog box so that I can come in here and type in values rather than having to do it through each dimensional dialog. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of changes in here to my parameter names. As a reminder, there are certain rules for parameters. We cannot start them with numbers, we cannot use spaces in their names, and we cannot duplicate any of the names. However, we can use case sensitive letters to make similar types of naming conventions. So here I have quite a few parameters created, but it's not all the ones I would like to adjust. There's actually a value for thickness that I would like to control for the overall thickness of this material. Now I can do that here as well if I know which parameter it is. If I hover on some of these parameters, they will tell me what they are consumed by. Here I can see D8 is consumed by extrusion one. That's most likely the thickness value. The D9 value is zero degrees, also consumed by extrusion one. That's most likely the taper value for that extrusion, and something I don't really care to track on this design. Therefore, you don't have to rename every parameter, only ones which are crucial to your work. I'll choose Done down here. I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. Now when I modify the extrusion by selecting a face and choosing Edit Extrude, I can come in here to this input box or the input box in the miniature HUD and type in a new parameter name. There I have thickness equal to 0.5. I'll do the same thing for the fillets. If I return to my parameters dialog box, here I can see the parameters have been renamed automatically without necessarily having to go back to that dialog. Some of the other things I can control in here are things like making a parameter a key value. So it's easily found if I have to do a search or a filtering of my parameters. To mark something as a key parameter, I will select it over here on the key column. So perhaps these values are most important to me. I'll go ahead and select them. Now to filter those, 
I can use my filtering tool on my parameters here and filter only to my key parameters, my non-key parameters, ones that have been renamed from their D value or anything that has an equation to it. So there's my key values, non-key values. So basically the inverse of that. I'll go ahead and go back to all. I can also choose an option to export my parameters for use in later designs, or if I would like to export these to be I properties inside my file as well. I can also put comments in each parameter here so my team better understands what that parameter does and why it's important. You might also do this if you're trying to have a better memory yourself of your design and why that parameter was important. Now, when it comes to modification, you can change your parametric values right inside of this dialog box. I'm going to change my opening angle value. I'll locate my 75 degrees, and I'll change that from 75 to 120. Since immediate update is selected in the bottom of this dialog box, when I select this and hit enter, it will then automatically perform the model update for me based on my geometric change. Now I'll go ahead and select done. So here we took a look at parameters, how to create them, how to modify them, and how to mark them for importance. This plays an integral role in configured design inside of Autodesk Inventor, mostly because these parameters help us derive all of our dimensions and controls of our models throughout different procedures we're going to see in this course.